Thank you. Twenty twenty. That means 1980 is 40 years ago. Can you believe that it's been 40 years since The Empire Strikes Back came out? Think back. Do you remember that it's been 40 years now since George Brett of the Kansas City Royals chased a 400 batting average, finishing the baseball season at 390? And can you believe that the breaks by Curtis Blow is already 40 years old? Break it up, break it up, break it up! Um, then, it, then again, Maybe you can on that one. That, that one sounded pretty dated. Still, can you believe it? 1980 is officially over the hill. Well, 2020 also marks another kind of milestone. Yet another failed end times prophecy by a cultic group. This time it's a sizable number of the Hebrew Israelite movement. Note, I didn't say all or even most, but rather that a sizable number have been telling us now for a few years that the curses and captivity of the so-called Hebrew Israelites will end in 2019. For example, here's a book called Proof is in the Pudding by Rhonda Harlan. We'll read you two sections where she says exactly that. We must pray every day in this captivity until we are released from it in this current year, 2019. Break the mental chains of slavery now holding our people down. We must return to the laws, statutes, and commandments by faith. 2019. The 400 years curses will be over. Genesis 15, 12 through 14. Will you be ready? The end of our curse is upon us. The official dates of the slavery and the United States of America began August 1619. 400 years later would be 2019. In fact, both Adam Coleman and I did videos on this phenomenon in 2019. These videos were filmed on site at Point Comfort, Virginia. You have to watch the videos to understand the historical significance of that location. I'll put a link in the description. But now 2019 has passed and it's 2020 and the 400 year prophecy has failed. But fear not, my dear Hebrew Israelites, you are not alone because this type of cultic prophetic failure isn't the first time this has happened. For example, did you know that in February 1835, Joseph Smith, founder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, better known as the Mormons, predicted Jesus would return within 56 years before 1891. You may have heard that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, have predicted the coming of Christ at least five times by most counts within their first century of existence. That's not even including some of their other failed predictions, such as falsely predicting the resurrection of Abraham and other ancient figures in the late 1920s and 30s. The Jehovah's Witnesses even bought a house in San Diego for Abraham and friends in 1929 for when they were supposed to return. It was called Beth Serim. It was called the House of Princes, which they later sold in 1942. This time, however, the false prophecy falls at the feet of certain members of the Black Hebrew Israelite community. A sizable number of Black Hebrew Israelites promoted the idea that their captivity would end in 2019. Some black Hebrew Israelites who promoted this idea insinuated the return of Christ and ensuing judgment would be the mechanism by which this would happen. Other Hebrew Israelites disagreed with that aspect. For example, Elder Shadrach Porter, leader of a Toronto-based group of Hebrew Israelites, mocked this version of the 400-year prophecy being promoted by some of his fellow co-religionists in an interview which has almost 160,000 views at the time of this recording. End of the 400 years, what are we looking at? The Messiah coming? What is going to happen at the end of the 400 years? Oh, we hear that all the time. All you need to go is go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear the Messiah coming. Mm -hmm. But when the man Jesus was asked a question, he said he doesn't know. Mm. 
Other Hebrew Israelites claim 2019 will mark the restoration of God's people in some significant way. But most Hebrew Israelites who talked about this prophecy kept it vague. It has to be more than a coincidence that the 400-year curse pronounced on Israel ends sometime in 2019. Or maybe they would say the 400-year curse ends sometime in 2019. Or they might say something big is going to happen to fulfill this prophecy. Or our captivity will end in 2019. Or time is almost up, but they never clearly defined what they meant. For example, Hebrew Israelite author Dante Fortson writes that the fulfillment of the 400-year prophecy is, quote, that the prayer lines open up in 2019 because the curse will end, end quote. And quote, the only thing you should expect is that sometime in 2019, we can start calling out to the Most High again as a people. In one of his multiple videos discussing the 400-year prophecy, Fortson implies part of the fulfillment of the prophecy will be a, quote, shift in attitude towards true Israel, end quote. In the same video, Fortson hints that events such as the president of Ghana announcing 2019 as the year of return may indicate that the black Hebrew Israelites of America must first go into Africa before they return to the land of Israel, as if perhaps West Africa could be equivalent to their own wilderness journey. Fortson, along with many other black Hebrew Israelites, also seems to believe that current talk about reparations could be a possible fulfillment of Genesis 15, 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. It's stuff like this that has helped Dante earn a well-deserved nickname, 400 Years Fortson. By this time, you're probably wondering, how did the Hebrew Israelites who promoted this now-filled prophecy come up with this day? Honestly, it's, it's, it's kind of confusing. Seriously, you'll, you'll see what I mean. But here we go. Almost all Hebrew Israelites who touted 2019 as an especially prophetic year began in Genesis 15, 13. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. The next move some proponents of the 400-year prophecy make is to argue that the descendants of Abraham did not experience 400 years of slavery in Egypt. For example, in this book, Hebrew Israelite by Five Undeniable Proofs by Dr. Trevor Eudenis, he says that exact thing. To whom does the probability of the curses refer? Genesis 15, 13, 14. 400 years of slavery in Egypt, wasn't it? The answer is no, because they were not in Egypt for 400 years under a wicked Pharaoh or in slavery for 400 years, but we were. I've heard directly with my own ears, many Hebrew Israelites explicitly blame the movie, The Ten Commandments for belief in the 400 years date, seemingly ignoring a possible confirmation of that number, Acts 7, 6. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil 400 years. Quick caveat, to be fair, there is some legitimate debate amongst historians on the question of the length of time of Hebrew bondage in Egypt. Some scholars land on about 400 years, or 430 more precisely, and others go with 215 years or so. To better understand these issues, I recommend Professor Jack Riggs' 1971 article on the subject linked in the description below. But back to our Hebrew Israelite friends. The specific Hebrew Israelites who are proponents of the 400 years prophecy continue their argument this way. Since the Israelite captivity in Egypt was not 400 years, and yet 400 years were prophesied the 400 years in captivity prophecy still must be fulfilled since we know God's word is true and prophecy can't fail. The next step some of these Hebrew Israelites make is to then misuse Deuteronomy. Ah! <laughs> I've been saying that for years. 
I mean the right way. The next step some of these Hebrew Israelites make is to then misuse Deuteronomy 2868 to claim that the United States is, in some sense, a new Egypt for the true biblical Israelites. For example, Hebrew Israelites by Five Undeniable Proofs by Dr. Trevor Eudenis. I'm going to turn now to page 114. What is the probability of all these things occurring to one group of people 3,000 years after it's written? Deuteronomy 2868 taken into slavery by ships for 400 years. The people called Afro-Caribbean, Afro-American are the only people who fit each and every prophecy perfectly. I challenge you to find another. There is none. And here is an example by Elder Shadrach, leader of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. It means that the United States of America is Egypt. If you read the Bible, it will tell you that. You shall go into Egypt again with ships. The old Egypt, you did not need ship. I'm thinking about that right now in terms of how they would get to the, uh, how they got to the old Egypt versus the new Egypt ships. They couldn't uh, take ships to the old Egypt. No, the um, old Egypt, we didn't need ships. Yeah, they didn't need ships. One thing to note, Elder Shadrach of INWWM seems to hold a different version of the 400 year prophecy, where he, and he's certainly not alone on this, argues that the first captivity in Egypt was indeed 400 years, and therefore this current captivity will also run 400 years as well, in the New Egypt, the United States of America. This position that both the current captivity in the USA, as well as the initial captivity in Egypt, both are 400 years, is yet another variant of the 400 year prophecy. Indeed, there are many variations of the 400 year prophecy, but they all share a basic premise. 1619 marks the beginning of captivity for persons kidnapped from the continent of Africa, and 2019 marks the end of captivity for descendants of said persons who are actually the true biblical Israelites. Now, not to be outdone, other Hebrew Israelite advocates, such as the End of the World Ministries, believe much of the 400 year prophecy has already been fulfilled and is currently in the process of being fulfilled further. Personally, I do not believe that much of the 400 year prophecy has started to be fulfilled. I mean, personally, I do believe that much of the 400 year prophecy has started to be fulfilled. I do. I believe we're seeing the beginnings of the fulfillment of the 400 year, the end of the 400 years. However, End of the World Ministries claims if you have, quote, European training, you will never be able to see the fulfillment of the 400 year prophecy until it is too late, when the great and final war is brought to America's shores in order to judge the U.S. The final piece of the puzzle of knowing if the 400 year captivity is at an end is the coming war between America and Iran and their allies. Teo has taught this before you all knew this would be an issue between America and Iran. As an example of this fulfillment, End of the World Ministries talks about people migrating to countries such as Gambia and Sierra Leone as, quote, a partial fulfillment of the 400 years prophecy. But you must understand, not only is the year of return happening, right? You're going to see other things happen. There's a call to return where? There's a call to return to Africa. This is part of the fulfillment of us leaving the lands of our captivity. Frankly, End of the World Ministries and other Hebrew Israelite groups like them want to have it both ways in regards to date setting for the full fulfillment of the so-called 400 year prophecy. They want to make a big deal about 2019 and now even 2020, but without giving any meaningful specifics until after the fact. This, my friends, is a cheap trick. Don't be fooled. Now, let me offer a final word about these new dates being offered and these recalibrations. Since it's obviously now 2020, 
And since obviously nothing has really happened, what are the Hebrew Israelites who promoted this 400 years prophecy saying? Some are saying that the white man has tinkered with time and therefore they blame it on the westernized calendar. Others are saying that all they really meant was that the fulfillment of the 400 year prophecy can come anytime after 400 years, not that it would happen at the 400 year mark. Others are even recalibrating saying now that the proper date is actually August 20th, 2020. Although 1619 to 2019 makes up 400 years, we must finish the final year. Therefore, the end of the prophecy would be August 20th, 20th, and not August 2019. And so now we have most likely yet another false prophecy to look forward to. But the loudest voices are now promoting this idea that the 400 year prophecy was and or is being fulfilled. It's just that we can't see it. Then they look back at 2019 and find ad hoc news items. They can force like so many misshapen pieces into a puzzle of their own making. It's prophecy after the fact, ladies and gentlemen, which is really no prophecy at all. One final word now I offer about the One West camps. Remember, I said this was probably not a majority position, but it certainly is a sizable number. My fellow urban apologists know this. For we, we couldn't go anywhere on the Hebrews like sections of the internet for the past couple of years without bumping into proponents of the 400 year prophecy. They were everywhere. Here's some examples. Still, there were certain groups, like the Israel of God, not One West, based in Chicago, who spoke out against the 400 year prophecy. And there were other groups. In fact, you know the Hebrews like groups on the corner, the ones who like to yell? Yeah, those guys. We call those guys One Westers. Well, guess what? This is one they actually got right. Almost all the One West Hebrew Israelite camps came out against the 400 year prophecy before the fact. That's right. For example, here's a whole video of Raka of GOCC debunking the 400 year prophecy. Now, his came out after the fact, but still, you get the idea. In fact, here's a video where a one West GMS Hebrew Israelite calls the 400 year prophecy a quote, false doctrine and says, quote, it's like the year 2000 prophecy all over again, end quote. Wait, what's that all about, you might ask? The year 2000 prophecy? Well, I think this is a case of fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. See, in the late 90s, the leader of the same group, the GMS Hebrew Israelites, Tahar, heavily promoted the false year 2000 prophecy. But this time around, Tahar and the GMS camp he leads are steadily against the 400 years prophecy. But back in the 90s, they were all about the year 2000 false prophecy, which claimed Yahweh Shai was coming back to ignite a final race war in which the 12 tribes of Israel would finally slaughter and enslave all the Arabs, Asians, Africans, Indians, and Europeans who troubled them. Here's some examples of Tahar preaching that false doctrine. You're in the latter time of your kingdom. You're at the end of your kingdom. Your kingdom was supposed to go what to the year 2000. But look, Tahar wasn't the only one. Almost all of the one West Hebrew Israelites promoted the false year 2000 prophecy in the year 2000. In fact, I think I'll end this video with a brief montage of this false prophecy. That's all for now. Maybe I'll see you again though on August 20th, 2020. Until then, Volcam Malone signing out. Oh. And be sure to like this video, share this video, please subscribe to the channel as well, and now enjoy these clips of Hebrew Israelites promoting the false year 2000 prophecy in the 90s. Face of the earth by the year 2000 is talking about judgment day. And he's coming back. And he's going to take down the white man, the Edomites. That's why your pope is down in the ground. It's going to happen by the year 2000.
You ready? That's it. Because America, America's going to be wiped off the face of the planet Earth. That's going to take place before the year 2000. That's right. That's going to take place before the year 2000. That's right. That's going to take place before the year 2000. That's right. America has less than 628 days yet. America has less than 628 days yet. America has less than 628 days before this country is taken out and thermal nuclear destruction. This kingdom, America, is going to be destroyed. And all you so-called white people, your condemnation, you are condemned to what hell? And you're gonna be in hell, you're gonna be oppressed before the year 2000. Christ is gonna come back. Museum America is gonna be destroyed before the year 2000 by thermal nuclear destruction.